Thank you. Great timing. <laughs> Mr. Rosenzweig. Chairman Connolly, Ranking Member Jordan, members of the subcommittee, I thank you for the invitation to appear before you today and present testimony. My name is Paul Rosenzweig, and I'm a senior fellow at the R Street Institute. I'm also a principal and founder of Red Branch Consulting, a small consulting company, and a professorial lecturer in law at George Washington University. In addition to being a lecturer at George Washington, I am a former adjunct lecturer at the Medill School of Journalism at Northwestern University, where, along with two colleagues, I co-edited a book, Whistleblowers, Leaks in the Media, the First Amendment and National Security, that was jointly published by Medill and the American Bar Association. That work, along with my experience in the national security field, brings me here today. Though I'm generally thought of as a conservative, my testimony today is, I hope, nonpartisan in nature. Since I believe that the issue of whistleblower protections is one of enduring interest to both parties, and indeed to all Americans, I'd summarize my testimony with the following four basic points. First, in American history, whistleblowers are not an afterthought. Though they are not mentioned in the Constitution, they have a history that predates our nation's founding. Much like the free press, whistleblowers are an essential safety valve of accountability and transparency that allows America to have an effective and empowered executive branch while maintaining control over it to prevent a descent into autocracy. Second, the existing structure of whistleblower protections is, at least to some degree, grounded in constitutional freedoms and the First Amendment. Beyond that, Congress's history of support for federal whistleblowers is embodied in a series of laws, the most recent of which, the Whistleblower Protection Enhancement Act of 2012, confirmed Congress's longstanding view, dating back to before the nation's founding, that providing whistleblowers with adequate protection and incentives to come forward serves American interests. Third, for that reason, it is utterly unsurprising that whistleblower protections have always had bipartisan support, both in Congress and in the courts. Figures who hold a, views as diverse as Senator Charles Grassley and Justice Sonia Sotomayor have spoken eloquently about the value of whistleblowers. My own view, that of a longtime conservative attorney, is that whistleblowers serve a critical function in our structure of democratic accountability. In any system where the electorate is the ultimate arbiter, the value of transparency in executive action is of paramount importance. Fourth, finally, I offer a word about the idea of confidentiality and anonymity, a topic that I know is of some controversy today. I would hope that the temper of the moment would not undermine our well-grounded belief that whistleblower anonymity, when asked for, is a fundamentally positive value. All too frequently, whistleblowers have faced retaliation for their actions. If we wish them to have a positive incentive to come forward, and I think we all agree that we do, then, in my, then it is, in my view, essential to provide whistleblowers with the protection of anonymity when they wish it. All people respond to incentives, and any wise system of law will recognize that. Thank you very much, and I look forward to answering your questions. Thank you so in, much. In a December 2019 survey, which the Government Business Council um, conducted, of 691 federal civilian employees, 34% answered, and I quote, the attacks on the whistleblower by President Trump and various congressional Republicans have made it much less or somewhat less likely that I will report an act of perceived wrongdoing um, to the appropriate authorities. Mr. Rosenweig, are you concerned about the impact of the rhetoric um, that we hear sometimes from some of our colleagues um, when they are referring to the whistleblower who alleged misconduct by the President? Well, sir, uh, I went to the University of Chicago. They taught us that incentives are everything, that people are essentially rational actors who respond to external sim stimulus. If whistleblowers perceive a greater risk to their personal livelihoods, to their employment, to their personal safety, uh, they will be less likely to come forward. That is as sure as night follows day and, the, and rain follows the sun. Uh, so, yes, it is inevitable that uh, adverse rhetoric that challenges the integrity of or the confidentiality of whistleblowers will have the second order effect of systematically decreasing the likelihood that whistleblowers will be willing to come forward. And that's, that's an iron law of, of human nature and of economics. It's not